Hi, I'm Cooper for Rack Robotics, and in this video series, we're going to walk you through the assembly and usage of your Wire EDM starter kit. In today's video, we're going to cover installation of magnets and threaded inserts into your 3D printed components. So before we start, let's explain what EDM is. Electrical Discharge Machining, or EDM, is a non-contact machining process that uses thousands of microscopic lightning bolts every second to vaporize any conductive target material. Unlike conventional CNC milling or lathe turning, there's no contact required between the tool and the workpiece. You're not physically scraping away material. With EDM, you can cut anything from aluminum and brass up to hardened steel, titanium, and even tungsten carbide. We have our wire EDM starter kit right here. This contains the PowerCore V2 EDM pulse generator. This creates the sparks required for the EDM process. Then we have our wire tool kit. This has the hardware required to convert your 3D printer or motion system into a wire EDM tool. Then we have our wire feedstock. This is the tool that's used to actually do the wire EDM process. It's consumed during the cut. We have our 3D prints. These can be found on the Rack Robotics printables page and are referenced in the guide on the Rack Robo website. And then we have our donor motion system, in this case, an Ender 3. This one's a little beat up, but it's still going to be great for doing wire EDM. So the majority of the assembly that we're going to do today concerns the wire tool kit. This is the most in-depth portion of the build and we've included pretty much everything you're gonna need in here to convert your 3D printer into a wire EDM machine. We're gonna start by opening this up and making sure that we have everything in there. Now, I've already validated this kit, but you can validate yours with the build materials that you'll find in our documents on our website. We have the hardware kit, the EDM wire guide, the tungsten carbide blocks, these are used to bring the wire into the circuit, our CNC kitchen threaded inserts, our spool motor, and our aluminum endoskeleton. This has a Type 3 anodize on it to keep it non-conductive and corrosion-free. The first thing we're going to do is install magnets into the 3D prints that require them. That would be the base components here in gray and the covers here in orange and gray. These magnets are used to provide a quick disconnect for the covers. These covers provide a measure of additional safety during the operation of the wire tool and they also provide a measure of aesthetic detail, which we like. When we're doing the installation of the magnets, one of the things we recommend is adding a small dot of super glue to the magnet bosses that you see here on the parts. While not strictly necessary due to the press fit nature of the magnets, the super glue provides a measure of added security when we cycle these magnetic covers on and off. We're going to start off by putting the magnets in these base parts here. From there, we can check the polarity of the magnets and make sure that they match up with the ones that we place in these magnetic covers. For more detailed instructions, please check the docs on our website. We have over 100 pages of illustrated and written instructions to help you put together your kit. One of the things I like to do is put the magnet here on the tip of this T30 bit, and then I'll use a dead blow mallet to actually tap the magnets in place. So we'll line that up. Looks like I actually put a little bit too much glue on this one. We just wiped that off. But we're gonna continue this process for the rest of the magnets and all of these base pieces. And then we're gonna move on to putting them into the covers over here. Yeah, that's, that's, just, that's just nice. I don't know, I, I really like this. Some of these magnets, like you see right there, this one just popped into place. So depending on your print quality or the actual tolerances of the magnet that you get, sometimes they will fall into that spot. That's another reason why we add glue to the setup. We'll see if this one goes on like that. And it did. Okay, now that we've installed the magnets into these pieces over here, we're gonna move on to the magnetic covers on this side. This part you have to be careful with. We can apply our super glue in the same way ahead of time, but when it comes to actually installing the magnets, you're going to need to actually go over to the part that has the magnet in it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the polarity of the magnet before installation. This is really important because it's gonna be the difference between your magnetic covers wanting to stick on to the spot that they're supposed to or push away from the spot. So we have two matching parts here and we're going to make sure that 
the magnets that are going to get installed stay in this orientation when we install them. So what I do is I put the magnet on here ahead of time. Then I take off the magnet that I want and I make sure that I place that same face that was on this spot here onto the face that I'm driving the magnet in with. That way I know we have mating faces. It also helps before you install those magnets to do a test fit like this, just so you know what orientation those magnets are supposed to be in. So I'm gonna go through and put super glue on these parts here now. And now that super glue is applied, I have my pre-oriented magnet on the tool here. I'm going to put it in the first hole and we'll see if these press fit in without the hammer. That one's good. There's a little bit of extra super glue, so I'm just gonna try to wipe that off there. That extra super glue that comes out of there, if you put a little bit too much into the magnet boss, can actually cause an interference with the fit when you're trying to assemble it on later. And again, you've got the magnet that's already in place there. We're gonna pay attention to the orientation it has when it's actually touching that other magnet. I'm gonna take that off, we're gonna place it. This face, the face that wants to mate with this one, place that facing onto the tool you use to press it in. Again, it's important to pay attention to orientation. We have mismatching pieces here. This is the one that's actually supposed to go on there. It looks pretty good to me. So now that these are assembled, if we want, we can do a little bit of test fit and there we go. Everything's working correctly and We'll just remove that quickly to make sure nothing glues together from any of that uh, overflow of the super glue. And we'll put these to the side. I'm gonna finish these up and then we'll move on to the next step. So the threaded insert portion of the assembly really isn't that bad. There's only eight threaded inserts for us to install. I have here a threaded insert installation tool, but this isn't required for the installation. You could just use a regular soldering iron. We're gonna start our installation with the tensioner body. This is the only part of the assembly that requires both M4 and M3 inserts. The M3 inserts go onto the bottom side here, and the M4 inserts go onto the back side here. Starting off with the M4 inserts on the back side of the tensioner body, I find it easiest to pre-position the threaded insert next to the hole it's supposed to go into. This allows me to take the threaded insert installation tool and line it up in the part before I actually guide it over to the hole. It can also help to use a flat object while the insert is still hot and mostly inserted, just to press down on that flat surface, trying to make sure that the top of the insert is level with the 3D print. Keep in mind that these don't have to be perfect. I personally am not very good at installing threaded inserts and you don't have to be either. These are not load-bearing components. These are just to help the 3D printed parts stay on the back of the endoskeleton. Next, we'll move on to the tension arm. It's important that the tension arm has the insert applied from this face. This is the internal face and the way it's going to be installed in the actual tool. In this orientation, all forces will be trying to push the insert through the plastic part. If you install it the other way around in the large side hole, this is going to tear out immediately. So again, we pre-position the threaded insert right near where we want it, place in the insert tool, and then guide it into the hole. It doesn't have to be a knife that you use for this part. You could also use a flat surface. I like using the base of the threaded insert installation tool. Now we'll move on to the front lower base. This is the one with those idler bosses on it. This top portion of the front idler base can be a little bit easy to get off angle here. So be sure to brace this part of it with your hand when you go to install that threaded insert. Be careful not to burn yourself. Now that we've installed all the M4s, we can move on to the M3s. Again, those live on this bottom portion of the tensioner body. Something to take note of on this installation is this hole right here. This is for dielectric flushing. It should not be used for threaded insert installation. So this might be the trickiest part of the assembly. We have to hold this part upright and install the threaded inserts in these holes. We can actually press them into this hole to get them started. I've taken the time to switch over to the M3 threaded insert installation tool. Take your time with this part as it can be a little bit tricky thanks to the orientation required for installing these. With the magnets and threaded inserts installed, we're gonna stop for right now. 
In our next video, we're going to cover assembly of the wire tool. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out at the Discord link below. Our team and many others are there and we're ready to help you troubleshoot.